The year is 2022, and there's an innocent Mr. Matty Plays typing up his email to Warner Bros. with the hope in his heart of delivering an early access review to his wonderful viewer base about Gotham Knights. Well, that didn't work, so here we are instead talking about the Arkham series. Ladies and gentlemen, certainly there's been zero controversy surrounding Gotham Knights. 30 FPS, what? Bad writing, who? Freeze can make weather now? Freeze can make weather now. This game looks worse than Arkham Knights, how? Oh, of course not, we're not doing any of that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just going back innocently to the Arkham series, not to spotlight that one series is better than the other, no, of course not. So join me as we go back to 2011. The year is 2011. Okay, one of the best years of gaming, hands down. Portal 2, Skyrim, Uncharted 3, Battlefield 3, Dead Space 2, Dark Souls 1, Gears of War 3, The Witcher 2, LA Noir, Infamous 2, I mean, it's insane. But to me, one of the top games of the year easily is Batman Arkham City a game that felt like a dream come true. When Arkham Asylum first came around and blew our socks off, it was unlike anything we had played before. Finally, a company had taken a big bet on a superhero video game that wasn't tying into any kind of movie. It was just an extremely good, highly polished video game. Then Arkham City rolls around, delivering a actual open world superhero experience, expanding on every core pillar established in Arkham Asylum. With the release of Gotham Knights, I couldn't think of a better time to go back to what I believe is the best superhero video game of all time next to Spider-Man PS4. So join me as we return to Arkham City. Ladies and gentlemen, when I say it is good to be back, that may be one of the biggest understatements because as I was doing my impressions of Gotham Knights, all I could think of was the Arkham series, whether it be the phenomenal Arkham City, I think the highly misunderstood Arkham Knights, the under-discussed Arkham Origins, and of course, the GOAT Arkham Asylum. I just wanted to go back here and now. I thought it was a perfect time. So let's not delay any further and play some Arkham City. I love the start of this game because I'm pretty sure you begin with Catwoman. And I thought that was a pretty jarring experience. Oh, yeah. Yep. Definitely. You would have thought. What the hell? It's Selena Kyle, baby. You, oh, man. I just don't know why in, in Gotham Knights, like, they just stepped away from any combat like this. Not everything needs to be an RPG. You know, sometimes you just want to feel like a badass. I know no one got free flow, right? Like, this was during an era where everyone was trying to do free flow combat. Remember the Amazing Spider-Man games? Oh, my gosh. This just feels so good. Oh. A nice shoulder kick to finish him off. Wake up, Mr. Wayne. Oh, that transition. Wow, I just feel like I got brought back 11 years from the past. Oh my god. Wow. So good! The infamous Playboy millionaire has never been one to... billionaire, Mickey. It's so funny seeing that type of cocky Bruce Wayne after watching the Batman back in March, where he's just this emo guy. <laughs> so now that we have you, protocol uh, you can see Bruce in the reflection. That's so cool. It will be my little, little attention to detail there. To your... I love how this game's intro is literally the opposite of how Arkham Asylum's intro was. If you don't recall, in Arkham Asylum, you're walking the Joker into the asylum, but here, you're walking yourself into this new super prison known as Arkham City, which is such a cool little 180. And I bet that's how the idea started for this game. Like, what if Bruce was the one going to prison? Here I was reporting on your crummy press conference. I guess that'll teach you to get involved in politics, won't it? Listen to me carefully. When they open the door, do not panic. What a powerful intro. The vibes here are unreal. We said stay close. You know, I didn't realize how much of a rip-roaring intro this is. I mean, just we're bouncing all over the place here. Just, again, built different. Knocked out penguin. See you later. 
this just solidifies how much of a badass Batman is. <laughs> Without his hands, his feet, I'm just shoulder rushing everyone. There we go. Now he's free. Free flow just feels like I'm doing an elegant dance and landing hard bows at the same time. Oh, this moment here. Yeah, we're suiting up. The mission has begun. Watching him put on the cowl. Oh, yes. Now, sh give me that shot of Arkham City. Mmm. Oh. Hey, yo. Oh, my God. Oh. I remember distinctly. This is my, let's see, 2011, my junior year of high school. And I played this game all day when it came out. I actually do recall when I played it that I got close to the end in my first first day playing it. I was kind of upset because it was short, but the quality there, man, it's so good. Yeah, so for those who don't know, this game is open world. And it's not the first of its kind. You can think of games like Spider-Man 2, Hulk Ultimate Destruction, that were open world superhero games, but this one was like a triple A level. There was side content. There were certainly, you can see right here, just north of me, there are some Riddler trophies down there on that building, some Riddler trophies over there, that gargoyle Riddler trophy. So yeah, it's, it's loaded with collectibles, uh, an addicting kind that is much, I don't know why they're so good because they can be so annoying to find at times, but I just enjoy the way the world is so thoughtfully created. And I think the Riddler trophies highlight that, but just such a fresh type of video game. As the famous review says, you actually feel like you're Batman. ba -doom. See you later. Oh, the special takedowns. We really start to break some bones here. This is the only game series I can think of where I'm like, please swarm me with enemies. Like, give me as many as possible. I think it's the beginning of Arkham Knight where you fight like 20 enemies at once. It's just like, yeah, give me more. Like, I want more. Yep, breaking kneecaps. Sure, why not? Flawless. Again, it's just a dance. It's just a dance. That's all it is. That's why it feels good. Beyond any of the deeper mechanics. It's just doing the dance. Yeah, but this is one of the things that always stood out to me about uh, Arkham City was you could go inside some of those landmarks that you'd seen in shows and movies and actually be there. Of course, many of the sub stories take place within these buildings. So that was always a, a major selling point for me. It's very cool how whenever he starts arguing with himself and he lets out his evil side, if you will, it flips to his burnt side. And then when he starts getting more rational, it flips to his not burnt side. Just cool little uh, choreography, I suppose. See, I think the best games ever don't sacrifice the storytelling and the early gameplay moments just to give you a tutorial. Like, the way it naturally leaves in combat, open world activities, now a little bit of stealth, while moving the story forward is why I think this game starts so quickly and so strong. And now I'm just going to jump into this mess here. Let's see what we got here. I told you all I want, I want as many as possible. See, to me, Arkham City's combat is is better than Arkham Knight's. Not because mechanically it's better. It's because of the enemy types. I feel like once you got to Arkham Knight, there were almost so many different enemy types that you had, like, a new answer for everyone. And combat didn't have that flow that this has. You had to, like, use the explosive gel for one enemy. enemy use the bat grapple for another. Use the batarang for another. It's just like, oh my god. You know, I just want to throw some some hands eventually instead of using a trick for every two enemies. So I, that's why I personally prefer the Arkham City combat. I don't know if anyone agrees with that, though. one lets me out of here alive? So what do you need, Mr. Detective? Protocol 10. What do you know, Selena? Never heard of it. That's not what I wanted to hear. Oh, he didn't like what that. Strange? He did not like that. <laughs> He's been missing for years. And then is suddenly put in charge of running Arkham City. Rumor has it he's been working with Joker, planning something very special just for you. Maybe that's protocol. I did not realize some of the foreshadowing there. Watch me kill your favorite cat. Something. What the hell? See you soon, 
See, moving that tutorial sequence forward without sacrificing the actual story, like right away. Now we're here inside the detective mode. And I think we gotta look at the bullet hole, right? Yes. And it's like, okay, this is another part of the game. And they're showing you that and how it works, but it's moving forward the story in an interesting way because now we're hearing from Joker for the first time. And he's got a really bad cough, which is a fascinating part about all of this. Because I remember, I will not spoil it, but I remember the ending to this game. And it was one of those moments where you just put your hands over your mouth and went, yo, what did I just witness right now? I think it is a goaded ending. One of my favorites. I still think about it to this day. And I, I played this game, what, tw uh, uh, what, 11 years ago now? Like, God, bro. It's, if you have not played this game, you can shut off the video. As much as I want the watch time, you could just go play and enjoy yourself some peak. He can't get out, and we are so as you can see right now, they're feeling confident. You can actually tell this when you go into detective mode. You can see on the right their their heartbeat, as well as their condition, like if they're calm, if they're nervous. And as you torture them from the shadows, they'll start to freak out a bit. I'll show you that in one moment, but this is actually a mechanic that a lot of people give credit to Rocksteady for. But if you played Batman Begins on PS2, Xbox, like in 2005, I think it was, they introduced a lot of these fear mechanics in that game. While it was a tie-in game, it was pretty good. So watch this. Like, what we're going to do... So we're going to throw this batarang here. And you're going to see they're nervous now. And I always like that. It's a very, very small detail. Not really a big problem. But as you start to take out more enemies, their heartbeat really picks up tremendously. But right now, you can see they're nervous. They're looking around. Boom. Now they're really nervous fighting me. I think they made the detective mode in this game look a little better. In, in uh, Arkham Asylum, it was very X-ray mode, so to say. Which wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but it was pretty hard to see in when you had to explore and like find mission objectives. Whoa, wait, hello. I forgot about this. Yo. Yo. See if you are ready. <laughs> I forgot he watches you. That is so missable. I'm glad I noticed that. The watcher in the wings. Yep. I, I Again, just like those little changes on how you find side content. It's, it's so compelling. <laughs> it's not just another waypoint. It's so nice. So, yeah, you can level up in this game. This is something you could do in... Uh, I remember in Arkham Asylum, but this game definitely expands it a lot more with like little things such as armor upgrade, which was certainly nice. I don't know why my mouse pops up when I select those things, even though I'm using controller here. Combat, critical strikes. That one's really good, but it wipes out enemies pretty quickly. It's one of those games where you know it's really good because you don't want to take out enemies too fast because the combat just feels... Uh, a certain type of way, the bat swarm. You get Catwoman upgrades as well. Hers are less expansive because she's more like a side piece to the whole game. Uh, still important, but we'll go to bat suit and we'll we'll keep it simple. I always like to do the ballistic armor because your health can get shredded if you get caught in a stealth section and you get shot. There's very little room for forgiveness, but you get this XP by beating up enemies uh, and by completing missions in the game. Very simple stuff, but it works. And the local surveillance gives the city a little personality. You know what I'm saying? Just a little something. You can just hear the typical inmates speaking as you go around the city. And from here, it's really wide open to do what you want. Look at this. Nothing better than this. The thunder clap every single time you, you take out an enemy. Roll him up. Take him out. <laughs> just the unnecessary backflip just to jump kick him. <laughs> we'll take it, though. Oh, the phone ringing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I remember this one creeped me out when I was in high school. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. Where are you guys going? Whoa. 
He hides in a box. He hides in a box. That's so funny. I didn't know that. Normally, I do the main story content first because you want to get as many tools as you can to complete uh, all the side objectives, specifically the Riddler trophies. If you want to get 100% completion, you need to do that. But just something like this. I cannot resist. Let's 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 answer the phone. Let's see who's there. Do you recognize my voice? Victor Zaz. In the flesh. Hmm. I'm so happy you remember me. I'll never forget you. I've got a special So game creepy. A game just for you. Ring ring. The music change. So good. It's funny because in, in the first Arkham game, you just drop kick Zaz once and that's all there is to it. But now in this game, he kind of terrorizes you. Those little encounters to me are what make this game special, right? The the, th the moment there you just saw with the Watcher, the call from Zaz. Uh, it, it really is like a rogues gallery type of game, but they just do it in a way that makes each encounter feel special. Um, and I think it's because it can happen dynamically like that. You'll just be going around and hear the phone ring. And just go see what's up but right now if i remember this part correctly we're about to take out harley quinn in one of the most hilarious manners Help me, yes yep here we go <laughs> all right i like how he just gets out of the way automatically that was not me doing that <laughs> wow well anyway I need to disappear. Pick them off silently, one by one. Don't you move, Batman. They don't know where I am. Good. Can you hear me? See, remember what I said about the BPM picking up? Now they're terrified, and it's even higher. I love that. Oh, I remember this takedown. So nice. Chokes him out with his feet. <laughs> Stay quiet. No one even knew. Something that Arkham Asylum desperately needed. The double takedown. Oh, man. I'd be terrified, too. Oh. One of my favorite things about Arkham Asylum was that they would have the cutscenes within objects in the world. And it kind of keeps it immersive, at least for me. Um, and they do it here too, even though it's open world and they've gone bigger and broader. You'd love to see it. He could have had me if he didn't say anything. Uh, this is the one part of the game that I wasn't crazy about, was the, the signal strength. I like that they try to keep away from the waypoints. Um, I definitely appreciate that. At the same time, though, you can end up like being too high or too low. It's easy to lose your way. Nothing worse than having your combo broken up, but that, wow, okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. The the bat claw yang and then the oh my god man. You just feel untouchable in this game. It's so good. Oh the AR training missions. Wow. I was never great at these, but let's see let's see if I can do this. Hold on. Come on, Batman. Stick with me here. Let's make it work. Can we do it? Can we do it? We did it. Good for me. Oh, yeah. You want to do those because the grapnel boost is literally busted in this game. Just the ability to double tap A and shoot past what you're grappled to. You never even touch the ground in this game. But some of them are difficult. This is what I meant by a tough one. Okay. Let's see if I got the upgrade here. Requesting grapnel boost drop off. Okay, yep, this is exactly 
what the doctor ordered. So now I can show y'all why you never touch the ground. You double tap A and it shoots you past your goal. And you can just never touch the ground. I don't know why they don't start the game off with this. They put it behind these AR training things and uh, it just makes tra traversal way better. See ya off the building. You Never mind. I was hoping you go off the building. We'll do this instead, though. I like how they play off of the fact that he goes into the front door almost everywhere in Arkham Asylum and to start this game. <laughs> the main chimney. That seamless transition. You know, ah, uh, oh God. I'm sometimes at a loss for words. <laughs> it's it's just so incredibly good. Oh yeah, I forgot. Your suit gradually gets damaged as you go throughout the game. So right now we have the bullet hole from where uh, Two-Face shot us. But I remember by the end of the game, your cape is completely torn up. And another thing that other superhero games copied, remember Amazing Spider-Man? As you gradually got through the game, Spider-Man's costume is ripped up all over the place. Not a bad thing to copy, it's, you know, certainly you're, you're taking inspiration from the right place. Just, again, uh, another sign of how they were complete tone setters when it came to the superhero genre. Still in the kind of tutorial phase, right? Still showing you how to navigate the world, how to interact with objects using your gadgets. But again, it's hard to tell given the fact that everything's moved so quickly and everything is so interesting. And we can even watch cutscenes here. We so desire. Cutscenes, in quotes. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, he's missing an army. He's just got a hammer. Wow. Well, that's one way to make an entrance. Oh, the double counter, the double counter. I remember that wasn't a thing. Did they have the triple counter in this game or was that just Arkham Knight? Oh, another double counter. Now we're now we're getting into the thick of it. Oh, he went for the penis punch, and he got him good. There's little things you can just pause and listen to throughout the whole game. Whether you're in the open world and you're listening to the goons talk or right there with Harley and Joker. Just little things. Little things. And those little things always serve to, to build the story. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. You could tag the Riddler trophies. Oh, my God. What a great improvement that was. I forgot that was a thing. So you never forget where they are. You just add them to the map and you say, I'll go back to them later. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, those little things can slide right under the radar in the game's design, but uh, I'm glad they thought of that because certainly I forgot. You say that, but I'm quietly taking your entire squad out. Finish that sentence, why don't we? Oh, the slow-mo take that. <laughs> this game does have that triple-A-itis where there's always a prompt telling me what to do next, which guides me to the next part of the game. Like right there, it's a double-A to dive through the window, and you realize, like, oh, okay, that's how I move the story along, or... You know, all those prompts, they're constantly telling you what to do, and some people have complained about that, the linear nature of the game. Which I think is fair. I think it's fair. But ultimately, it's a it's a finely crafted guided experience at that. Oh, hello. Another free takedown. Oh, another. Hold on. Shh. Don't make a noise. Don't make a noise. He's right. Yeah. Oh, oh. I almost made the noise. All right. We're good. We're good. We're just fine. I remember when I was younger, one of these segments gave me some trouble. And I wonder if this was it. Oh, we're making noise. We're making noise. Oh, there we go. Maybe it was my clumsiness repeating history here. No, you don't. I'm going to go inside this vent. Yeah. Yep, you don't see me. Sorry, pal. Boom. See ya. No, you don't. I'm coming through the window. Oh, God. Wow, he lit me up. But I had the last laugh. In Joker's house, baby. Something called Titan. Mm. Titan. 
Titan. Do you know what he's talking about? He kept going on about his last Could it be that he grew into a large destructive creature at the end of Asylum? I don't know. <laughs> I remember when I first saw this, I went, does Batman have a shotgun with him? I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah, remote electrical charge seems a little more fitting, but uh, like I said, at first I thought he had a shotgun with him. <laughs> like, oh wow, that's a 180. Okay. I don't know how this is hanging on, but thank what? goodness it is. Chicken. Would you two just shut the hell up and get ready? I don't like this any more than you do. Uh, Batman! Catch what, man? These feet? Oh. Oh, my God. I put them up on the desk. That's one way to make your uh, your entrance. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I was wondering when he shows up. and Here we go. Mr. Hammer. This is uh, not looking good for me here. They introduced one new enemy type, and I'm already at half health. Oh, hello. Probably shouldn't do that while I'm nearby. Oh, yes, it's this guy where you just unleash. No! I'm having a cool moment, too. All right, here we go. Oh, no, I might lose. Dodge! Let him have it. Yes, definitely a really bad fight for me. Sounds like Joker flatlined. Why? You. Get out of my way, Quinn. <laughs> he doesn't give a damn. <laughs> Beat him to a float. And so it's like, should I feel bad? Surprise. Oh, got me good. I'm surprised the Joker let her get all the swings in. Thought he'd, you know, take out some revenge on her. Oh, Poison Ivy. Yes, 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 yes. And this to me is where the game has that moment. I thought, oh, you know, maybe, you know, we're going to, I guess, have the occasional cat moment section. And it's like, no, no, you're going to be able to play as her in the open world and explore as her. I remember my mind just erupting with pure dopamine at this point. Because <laughs> now it's taken the Arkham Asylum experience, expanded it, and given us more to mess with. Uh, more more combat scenarios with Catwoman. Indeed it is. Sometimes I like fighting as her a little better because she's quick. You know, because back on the PS3, you would get the Joker challenge map and you can play as of course the joker but it was always in limited areas so like here to have the base game available to you and just be able to play as catwoman um and it made her useful beyond that because there were certain uh what was it uh the, the riddler trophies that only she could access but that feels like everything i really wanted to show in this video i i hope i did a good job capturing for all of you just how fantastic of a video game this is, but also how special this era was and that you just can't slap uh, a property to a video game and expect it to be great. Like, you gotta have that feel, that energy, which this game is to me like the magnum opus. It, it really does have everything you could ask for in a superhero game from diversity of movesets to a deep, dark story to plot twists, to open world content, forward thinking ways to discover said content, especially for its time. This is again, one of the first times I've gone back to this game in a long while to see how well it's aged is tremendously impressive. Uh, this has been years and years and years since I've come back. So I thought, oh, I'd notice some age here or there, but I am actually extremely impressed that I don't have a single problem with anything here. Maybe the way you detect the signal and have to track it down, I guess. But I'm like nitpicking at that point. I, I feel like this is the perfect superhero game. This is what set the tone for generations moving forward. So if you have yet to play the Arkham Trilogy and you were excited for about Gotham Knights, do not wait any longer. But uh, I hope I brought you back in time in a good way for those who did enjoy this series like I did. And with that... Please let me know your thoughts on Gotham Knights, 
on Arkham City, the Arkham series, in the comments down below. I'm very excited to see your thoughts. Other than that, please do take excellent care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next video where we play whatever. See you then. Peace out.